There's a misconception about the relationship between Trisha Paytas and her husband Moses Heckman that's being pushed by both Trisha, her fans and her friends that her and her husband Moses have the perfect relationship. In fact, her friend Tana Manjo is frequently stating that she herself needs to find her own Moses, helping to drive the narrative that Trisha has the picture-perfect partnership. It seems that people are forgetting how the relationship between Trisha and Moses began, and are ignoring the many dirty details that have been shared about their life together since. We thought we'd take the time to remind those who have forgotten. This is the real relationship that exists between Trisha and Moses, and it's far from the fairy tale ending that she and her fans want you to believe. Just as she had done with her ex boyfriend Jason Nash, Trisha drove to Moses' house in the beginning of their relationship under the influence. Luckily for Moses, she didn't crash her car into his house in the same way she did when she did it to Jason. Though she still put him in harm's way. So when I met Moses and like, at the beginning, I don't know if Moses like me, I even tell him this, I don't know if he liked me that much at the beginning, but I think we were ones that like over time grew in love, which I think is kind of good. <laughs> Where are you? I don't know. You were more out there than he probably was. He lived more of a quiet life. Well, and I was like taking Xanax, so I'd like show up to his house like, oh, out of my mind. She also spoke of how she threw a tantrum and almost broke up with him in the first year of dating because he wouldn't have a baby with her while barely knowing her. Remember, that first year was the same year she was driving to his house under the influence and where she physically attacked him. It was the same year they were constantly fighting and the relationship was at its peak of toxicity. Yet she wanted to bring a child into that dynamic and threatened to leave him if he didn't agree. Oh my god, that's so crazy. Thinking back, when you think back like, to our first year of dating, it's so weird how different we were. I don't know how we survived. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> food, good Postmates. We agreed on Postmates. We'd shower and post. I loved it when he came over. You come over and shower. We Postmates. I felt safe. He's been the night. I loved it. Those days were so fun. I kind of miss it. Well, one day. I mean, we progressed, which is good. But I mean, because back then I was gonna break up with you because you don't want a baby. I was like, we need to try now because I'm infertile and it's going to take forever. <laughs> and you're like, can't you just wait? <laughs> I was like, no. I waited. <laughs> we had a baby. Aw, I remember that night. You were really going to leave too because I was like, I'm breaking up with you. I was like, wait, no, no, go. <laughs> well, it was especially when we were trying to make a baby. It was definitely more like, okay, pants, <laughs> pants off. <laughs> It's a little bit more. Let's get to it. Oh, this is so fun. I, I, think was just, I was just like naively go up the stairs thinking we're going. <laughs> and suddenly. Pants down. <laughs> like, oh. There's been constant talk about how much Moses does for her, and it's normally presented in a way where Trisha acts as if she's grateful for this fact. But what she doesn't mention and what people seem to forget is how she behaves when Moses does these things often throwing tantrums if Moses does the smallest thing that she doesn't like while trying to do something for her. I don't think you're going to hate the salmon. I think you think I am. Because you keep saying, like, well, we can have, like, a burger or two. I'm like, well, I'm going to have one meal. Hmm. It depends how we make it. Also, i got to find, like, a really nice fresh piece, like a filet piece, not a piece that has skin or anything. No pressure, Moses. Moses is... Last time he tried to cook me fish, I ran down the stairs and didn't talk to him for the rest of the night. Yet she frequently brags about marrying her assistant. You guys can all judge me if you want, but I do not care! I have never, ever been happier! She has a tendency to snap on him, which she admits even though she states he's never mean to her like she is to him. I, I should watch those videos the once, because there was actually a, a lot of Trisha Paytas purposely ruined Moses' time lapse. I'm like... Well, people don't understand, I had my camera filming 24-7 everywhere, all the time. <laughs> Literally, yeah. <laughs> you know how many times I walked up, walked in your <laughs> filming? <laughs> I should be at home filming a video, I was just like, honey, I'm home, <laughs> like, in the middle of a video. <laughs> Yeah, but unlike me, you're very nice about it. You don't care. You're just like, oh, you're in my, you're my friend. Me, I'm like, are you crossing or not? <laughs> are you going behind me or not? <laughs> but, no, that actually hardly happens. It happens a lot. 
Whoever always go. It's not surprising though, considering she doesn't seem to care too much about him or his feelings. The first time Trisha ever asked Moses if he ever dealt with any kind of personal issue himself was on their honeymoon when she asked him a question that one would typically already know about their partner while dating. Yet she didn't even know until after she married him. You never had depression or anything? Anxiety, nothing? Mm -hmm. Really? I wouldn't think you did. She also seems to have an odd obsession with both being a teenager and having her husband pretend to treat her as if she is one. She also seems to be obsessed with the concept of her husband being one, in spite of the fact that both of them are middle-aged adults. If it's a boy, I want to look just like Moses, and he was so fucking handsome when he was a teenager. Right. Yeah, but I wanted to be a mix. I mean, well, That'd here's the thing. A, yeah. a, a boy, actually, I would love to look just like you, especially as a teenager. Like, I love teenage Moses. I'm like... I really hope our kid looks like he has a teenager. You know, what I'm like we're in high school. She has frequently spoken out about how she has made Moses pretend that she is his high school girlfriend, and has constantly talked about her desire to be a teenager, which they've role played in the bedroom for her own admission. You look cool. Look at you. You literally look like like my teenage son that I just gave headphones to. <laughs> I said that earlier today too. You look like a teenager. Were you drinking like chocolate milk or something, or was it last night? You did something the other day, and I was like. Like, oh, why did I drink it? Yeah. You look so cute. You look like you're freaking 18 years old. <gasps> like, like it. Like, how oh, cute you look. You look like you're a teenager. So cute. Do you love him? Odd that she's so excited about her over 40 year old husband looking like a teenager, when it's the same thing she criticized Jason Nash for trying to do. It's also odd that she has such a fascination with teenagers in general. She also makes contradicting statements about her own husband. For example, she once claimed he never bought her jewelry in spite of the fact that she bragged about how he did before. And was even called out on the spot by him for saying it. How can you never buy me jewelry? How can you never buy me jewelry? Excuse me? I would love this necklace for Christmas. You know how many diamonds you have in your closet <laughs> okay. for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. Oh yeah, I have other one. There's okay, more. Okay, all right, just forget it, forget it. Cute Chanel in there. I don't know where my Cartier band if we're really just, you know, going all out. I could wear my sad boy necklace. Oh, you know what? I like this. This was a necklace that Moses got me when we first started dating. I haven't worn it in so long, actually. This bracelet he got me for my birthday. Okay, I'm gonna wear this because means something that's really pretty so he always buys me necklaces like i love necklaces they're my favorite thing to wear so i haven't worn this one in a while but i think that's pretty i want pearls so bad i keep hinting that i want pearls because i watch this for housewives i'm gonna put this on real quick and i have my little bracelets on he got me a bunch of bracelets, but these are just a few. I really thick wrists, so sometimes I love crystal bracelets and I like collect them, but sometimes I can't wear them because they're like, oh, my wrists are a little too big for them. So these actually fit really nice and loose. And he always gets me bracelets on my birthday, so, and like Christmas, and I love them, so, and necklaces too. I have a lot of jewelry from him, and it's all very special and meaningful. If you're wondering how he's able to afford to buy her all of this jewelry, so are we, because there's been conflicting information about this man's income. One minute Trisha is claiming that he has a lot of money, and in the next, he's taking out loans. Yeah, I was totally, when I first met him, I totally judged him. I'm like, oh my God, you live in like a shitty water museum. He like, owns in the, it, though. Right, but he, had this little, but he had no other space. He like lived there. So I was like, okay, why are you like living there? But yeah, owning it, totally. I was like, oh, I love yeah. this guy already. Good credit, all that stuff. But then I was like, ew, you like, he didn't even have like a real shower. It was like a porta potty shower. And I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? And it was kind of ghetto. And then I was like judging him. But this is what I'm saying, ladies, never judge someone based on where they live because yeah, but he, he baller. Owned, yeah, but he, he owns the property. And also his bank it. account was fat as shit. I was like, oh, damn, okay. It's public record that Moses took out a PPP loan during this time. But let's get back into the darker reality of this relationship. For those who remember, Trisha spoke about lying to Moses about being on birth control, so that she could get pregnant when he wasn't ready for a child after barely knowing her when they first met. Like he actually like tries to get me pregnant, I don't have to like trick him or anything, like it's insane. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't recommend tricking dudes. I think I did in the past, I don't recommend it. But really? Like, what did you do? I think I'd be like, yeah, I'm on birth control. Oh, that's so fucked up. It's fucked up, but girls do it. I'm just telling people out there. That's like, like illegal, I feel like. It's not. 
It's not. It should be. It should be. That's a terrible like, crime. If a girl tells you to go on birth control, just don't believe her. Especially if you have money. Like, just don't believe her. Um. You better put those pills in her mouth and watch her swallow them. <laughs> no, for real. Because you know the biggest one that I used to tell people is like, yeah, I got the shot. I'm good for like three years. <laughs> so I was only ever with women who were on birth control when people were like, I do not want to have a baby with that man. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I was like broke, not going anywhere. No gonna, like, I was like, she's on birth control. Yeah, no one's going to try and trick you back then. Dude, I can't believe you did that. That's super scummy. Oh, I, I agree. I mean, I've done like way scummier things in the past. Who did you do it with? Oh my God, so many people. You want to have babies with like, that many like people? Rich, like, like famous people that I slept with, I definitely was like trying to like have you're a like, baby. I just want that, that child support. Oh uh, yeah, for sure. Moses did not fall for my tricks though. He did not fall for my tricks. I, I think one time he asked me, I think I might, when I was on like high or something, I was like, yeah, I, was, I have a shot. But he, did, he still pulled out. He's like, oh, I don't trust this bitch. <laughs> Nut inside. Stop. But don't have to trick him. So you should applaud me for that. Which for some reason she was able to say proudly without any repercussions. And remember, she wholeheartedly admitted that the only reason she was even with Moses in the first place was to rub it in Ethan's face. She was going to force a child on a man she was only with just to get under another man's skin. Can I just say I dated Moses just to rub it in your guys' face and now we're freaking engaged and bought a house though. Well, I'm glad you said that, which <laughs> explains why there was so much friction. But... <laughs> that was early on. That was early on. Stupid. You dated Moses to rub it in my face? Oh, I was there. so excited to come back. This was I like guess right it backfired. COVID. On who? On your plans, I guess. Not. I know, I was gonna be like, ha I fucked your brother. She was going to trick him and bring a child into the mess that was their relationship. And for those who don't remember, this is what that mess was. That's <laughs> not, this is so triggering. Ready? <laughs> I never said underage, I know I didn't. Okay, ready? Okay. Here we go. Dude, I know we don't talk, but Moses is disgusting. I have no intention of making anything about this, but maybe check him talking to your fans. Fans? This, yeah, I'm getting there. Okay. This is from a fat piece of shit fan of yours who is 23 and he fucked on <gasps> Valentine's Day. Don't say He is all disgusting. Yeah, 23? I said 23. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. First of all, don't read this because- You you better call all this for real. That is the psycho. Just don't. Well, fuck her then. No. I don't know. But you got baited. And then so, but my point is, but is that. But she's an actual psycho. Okay, fine. Who cares? Fuck house. her. That's well, you have a guard. Security. Yeah, okay, but, but anyway, you were yeah. sending me these DMs and I was like, wow, this shit's crazy. And then I actually started hitting up Moses because I was like, dude, why, I don't want, I can't have you flirting with my fans because you were kind I of. I was like, a fan. Yeah, I was a fan. <laughs> you said there's audio screen recordings. Check the bio. Yeah. And then you're like, check out this exposed channel with 10 followers. I was like, oh, that's you. That's mm -hmm. literally you. <laughs> oh, you think I'm the exposed channel? Yeah. Why would I want to like embarrass myself? No, you were just, it was all about trying to expose Moses. Why would Moses. I want to expose him? Because I was like really, truly like in love with him. Why would I try to like kick him? You said he talked so much trash about me and made fun of my body and then used me. He's scary and vile, needs help. Yikes. I was really mad then, but that's a different... I didn't answer because I was like, Moses, what is going on? But and then you, you say, responded a month later. You were like trying to charge shit because that was because I May. Because you... Yeah, because I didn't want to... This was insane. The but shit then you thought we were fine because we had fathers yeah. and everything. And you're like... Well, I... Because I'm like, I have to address the issue that Trisha just... Well, let me finish this. Can we not? Like, you said, just so not. you know, none of this was a troll. I truly thought he liked me, but he played me. He always was bitter. He was never on your... Oh, <gasps> here, I won't read this. I won't read that. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, my God. Can we just stop all together, please? This was already a point of contention. We're past it. Just stop. Hang on. I literally oh, don't want to have a Here, he, you said, he talks to underage girls. No. Right there. He talks to underage girls. Weird. Where? I, don't, I literally don't see Right it. there. He talks to underage girls. Confirmed that it says what that. that was. Yes, but but this is a different uh, situation. Say, we're I, talking about no, it's not. Yeah, it's no, the same about set of messages about his work. Stop! It's <laughs> the same set of messages. Five seven ten thirty. Five seven ten thirty. I'm telling you, this is Tom. To this girl. Is, you said read this part. He said it says this is a he different. talks to underage girls. It's a separate. It's a period. It's in there. not. It's okay. look. It's five seven ten thirty p.m. <laughs> 5, 7, 10, can 30 I p.m. Say, can I just say he doesn't talk to anybody now? Not even about his work, not men, not the, women, So nothing. I'm just trying to explain the situation. Oh, my God. Well, you I sa saved him from further embarrassment. You says he stalks to underage girls. I don't expect a response. And again, I uh, I don't want to talk to you again, but he's just a fraud and he's scary. Okay. He's, he said he broke up with you because you started, like, punching him. He's shaking his head no. Oh, okay. 
I have all access to his Instagram accounts, phone. Twitter. That's the definition of a good, healthy relationship. Like, I always know when you guys are texting him. Like, I always just know. Like, even before when he was, you guys would text him. Like, what's the tweets? Like, what are these? About? I'm like, don't fucking respond. Like, way early on. Yeah. Freaky. I love it. I know the group chat. So, I know so much, actually. The group chat? Yeah, I know you're about your guys. I know all the group chats that come through. So? I'm just saying I know everything about. I know a lot, about even about like your. I just know everything about your family and stuff. So, anyways, there's nothing to know about my family. I'm just saying I know a lot. So, are you trying to like threaten me? Or no, something? I just know a lot. Like you have a big mouth, okay? Maybe I got a big mouth too, but I'm gonna be nice and just like there's quiet. Nothing, well, the topic of this episode was really just you and Moses, which I think we really fleshed out. It was a great. I think we covered a lot of ground. Yeah, I think fantastic. we're done talking about that because you just. Yeah. Now we just go home and I have to like punch him again. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> the fact that she got away with not only hitting her boyfriend, but joking about doing it again after he told someone that it happened, isn't just worrisome but disgusting and shows that her fans will excuse anything she does. Had this been any other influencer they would have never been able to live it down, but because it's Trisha it's looked at as a cute and funny story, which just goes to show that her fans who are so quick to cancel everyone else over any small grievance with her don't actually care about protecting anyone or holding anyone accountable because if they did this wouldn't have been swept under the rug. Stay tuned for part 2.